Okay, so to start, we're gonna need some base geometry. And um, so here inside of Grasshopper, we're going to bring in a YZ plane. And what that's gonna do is actually allow us to create a C plane here. So we can use that as a reference for our arc. So I'll double click, bring in an arc, and then we'll use the YZ plane as a plane. And then we'll do the radius and we'll do 20. And since I want it to be 20, feet and radius and this is a uh, the units here are inches i will take this and multiply by 12. so i do a star or multiply by 12 and that gives you a b component of 12 where we can plug this in and now we have a 20 foot radius structure i also run in a scale person so you can see the reference of the scale that i'm kind of aiming for and now we can move on to basically extrude this arc. Now, notice that this arc is on the YZ plane, but the X is actually to the right. So we're going to take this arc and we're going to extrude it. Which direction? Well, we know it's going to be in the X direction. So we'll go here to X. Now we can use the X direction and we can plug in a value. So I'll take this and I'll copy it. So I'll drag this down and then hold down Alt to make the copy. Now I can plug that into there and it makes that, we can use that as a slider for the length. So this is our basic geometry that we're gonna be using for our structure, but you can also use any custom shape as long as it's a continuous surface, um, kind of like this. Now to increase the quality, you go here to preview mesh quality and then go to high quality. Cool. So here we have our base geometry. Now all we have to do is subdivide it using um, some points. Okay, so we're gonna subdivide this surface. What we're gonna do is take this extrusion and there's many ways to subdivide it, but since we're gonna be doing a Voronoi pattern, what I like to do is to project so we're going to take this entire shape and we're going to project it to the ground. So actually this is the wrong project. So there's two projects, project to B-Rep and then project to plane. The plane is going to be just the ground. And this is going to be where we populate the points for the Voronoi. So I'll go here to mesh. Then let's see here. Actually it's under vector, then populate 3D. And we'll take this geometry and we'll put that into the region. And there we have all those points that we could use for our subdivision. Now, sometimes I do like to take this um, original surface and kind of scale it up so the points are not just exactly on there. Uh, but I think this gives us a pretty good solution for now. So what we're gonna do is take these points. I'm gonna hide the preview on this. We're going to take those points and we're going to project it up to that surface. So when you double click and type in project, it's different than project onto B-Rep or this one, it's going to be project point. So we're going to take these points, put them into here, and now we're going to put in our B-Rep ge geometry. And nothing will happen until you give it a direction. So for a direction, we're going to go into Z. So we're basically projecting these up onto the surface. Great. So now we can take this, hide it, and we basically created all of these points on here. And what's cool is that here with this one, you have the ability to go from one to a hundred. It's already at a hundred, but you can increase or decrease the number here and then seed like one to five, because we don't need that many. This will just give you different random solutions to um, to the Voronoi points. So uh, this one is just good for you to, if you don't like the pattern that you get on the first seed, you could always kind of cycle through. So that's just one way to do it. And then here points, um, I'm not really sure what that one does, but we're not gonna be using that one. So for now we have this, 
And the next thing is going to be to create the Voronoi pattern. Um, and I'll show you how I go about subdividing the surface to do that. Okay, great. So now that we have these points, we're going to go here to Mesh, Triangulation, then Voronoi 3D. What this is going to do is it's going to take all of those points and it's going to create a Voronoi pattern around it. Now, this is not exactly what we want because as you can see, it doesn't really encompass the whole thing. So that's what this box input is going to be good for is because we want to actually create a bounding box. So I double click and bring a box component. Then I'll put that extrusion into that box component, which actually creates a bounding box around it. Then we'll take that and plug that into the box for the Voronoi. That way, that becomes the outside portion that the Voronoi sits onto. But the other good good thing, uh, a good thing that you should do also is to, if we preview this one, we actually want to scale this one up a little bit. So a quick way to scale something is I'll just go to area to get the centroid. Then I'll go to scale. Then I'll plug in the box into the geometry, the centroid into the scale. And then here for the factor, we can just say 1.1. So it scales it up a little bit. And that box will actually plug into the Voronoi. So we can make sure that it actually intersects the whole structure completely and everything here because what we're going to be doing is splitting this surface so to split that surface we're going to actually go to intersect then physical then surface split but as you can see surface split is actually going to ask us for curves and this has b reps so one thing we have to do before we split this one is we actually have to get the intersecting points. So I need to get the intersecting lines between this and this. So to do that, we'll go to physical, B rep, B rep, and we'll plug in our cells as B rep B, and then let's see, then this one has B rep A. And that'll actually give us the intersecting points. Now you could use those lines as um, you know the the lines that you could use for a structure if you wanted to just use pipes but for us we actually want to take this one and we want to split it so we'll take these curves we we'll use that and then we'll plug in our original surface then we can take all of this basically just hide it and you'll notice that it'll actually not work until you go to curves and then flatten this what will happen is it'll actually give you the result that you want so from here there are many things that you can do um, but let's take a look at what happens when we increase or decrease the numbers here we see that everything updates accordingly and so now we can move on to create the rest of the structure which is going to be to actually um, give it a little bit of uh, a frame in between all of these okay so now that we have these and they're called fragments we'll actually go here to deconstruct v um, that way we can kind of use here the different things that um, basically exploding those fragments into the different components here um, so I'll just take this and hide it. Now I'm going to take these spaces and I'm actually going to scale them down. So to scale them down, I'll actually go to an area component and I'll take these spaces and I'll actually plug them into the area where I get that centroid. That centroid is actually going to be our, the point that we scale. So with that centroid, I'll double click here and bring in a scale component and that scale component we're going to use to scale all of these spaces. So as you can see, it scales them down to that, but we actually want to use those centroids to scale that down. Cool. So now we can take 
this geometry and this geometry and let's see if we're able to even loft together the spaces and these to get a frame so now we can take these we can hide it and we have a frame that we've created um, on that geometry and that pattern so the other thing that we uh, that you can probably notice is that if we take a look here inside view that some of those are actually coming in right because when you get the centroid of a curved surface the centroid is actually going to be not on the surface it's going to be hovering inside the point so one of the things that I would like to do is to actually take this pattern and move it out so what I'm going to do is bring back the preview of these and we have the the scale geometry but what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the centroid so to do that I'm going to go to a create a line because we want to create the direction in which we're going to move those so we have to find the centroid is going to be the end point the start point or the end point and then the point down here where we scaled Let's see here this point down here so that one here and then we have another one let's see we have this one here okay so for this one we're gonna get the centroid so I'll go to an area and this will make sense in a second once I bring in the centroid that is actually gonna be the point in which we create the line so these lines that go from the center to there, those are going to be the direction. So all of these curves are going to be moved out in that direction. So we do have to make sure that we're careful where we start and where we end because the start point is going to be the direction. So actually we want this one to be the start point and we want the centroid to be the end point. Now we can take this and we can move the centroids we can move them in which direction? Well, we know we're going to use an amplitude command, so we can plug in this line as a vector. And we can see that now we have the ability to go 12, and it goes 12 out. But let's do something like this. So I'll create a custom slider, and I'll go minus 12, dot, 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 12. That way, we can go both in and out. So let's say you want it to go in or you want it to go out. Either way, you have that ability. So with these points moved out, now we can actually scale them relative, not to that centroid, but relative to the centroid. So all of a sudden, if we hide the direction lines, can take a look here in side view so let me also hide this now we'll take a look here in side view and we'll see that they're actually going out and the more I bring this out the further out it goes because the centroids are what the pattern are being scaled down to so I'll actually increase this to something larger so we can get a more drastic effect So here, we'll go here into custom preview, and we'll also bring in a what's it called a swatch. So with this color swatch, we can actually see it a little bit better. And then let's change that color. So this is the type of thing that you could do, and um, we haven't even gotten into if we wanted to do some curve attractors or point attractors what we can uh, achieve So this is just a quick tutorial as to how to create a Voronoi type of structure like this um, And if you do have any questions or you want me to develop this further, let me know in the comments um, Yeah, and I hope to see you next time. Thank you for watching